I'm here with Lainey Brown. Hi, Lainey. Hi, Al. Happy to be here. And Leanne Brown, not related, but birthday person. <laughs> we will not say anything further about that because by the time people watch this, the birthday will be long past. That's right. And Rachel Dennis is with us, who just joined us, a longtime Writer's House person and a poetry person, and now a new resident of, I didn't say, where are we, Leanne Brown? Glasgow. We're in Glasgow, and Sophia DeRose is with us, having come all the way from Philly, and our host, I guess you could say, <laughs> Christy Williamson, a wonderful, wonderful poet, and uh, who's really made all this possible in a way. And I just want to acknowledge that Lainey Brown, with some help from Christy, has curated this, this series here, and we're so grateful. Today, we're talking about a poem by Tom Leonard, and I'm sure there will be an opportunity in a little while for us, a few of us, certainly Christy, um, to talk a little bit about Tom Leonard. I'll just say to start that Tom Leonard was, he's gone now, much, much admired in the U.S. among the avant-garde. Um, he really, I mean, I, I think he was revered here, certainly in Glasgow. He's Glaswegian, right? Massively, yeah. Yes, he's, massively. He's massively revered and massively Glaswegian yeah. as well. A really important figure, a troublemaker in the best poetic way. Yeah, right? yeah. And in the U.S., just so many people. So that's how, that's how, for instance, I got to meet him because he, not often, because he was ill in later years, got to, to read in the U.S. So we're talking about a poem called A Hundred Differences Between Poetry and Prose. And to say the least, there are not a hundred sentences. He sort of gave up after a while. <laughs> but I'd like to ask everyone, starting with Lainey, to... Oh, I, you know what I didn't say, Lainey? What? We are here at a pub. Do we say pub? Yeah, we say pub yep. very much so, yeah. Okay. Yes. We are here at the Scotia, and we're having some Glen Scotia. This is Glen Scotia here. And we're having some Laphroaig with a little ice cube in it. So we're really in our cups already. <laughs> All right, Lainey, pick out a line and that you admire and say a little something about it so we can get a sense of Tom Leonard's tone as he favors, clearly favors poetry in, in the Dickinsonian way, you know, we like poetry over prose. So I'm looking at the seventh line, poetry is the subliminal history of linguistic shape. And what I love about this is that it's talking about not the concrete history that you can read, but the history that's imaginative and associative and implied. That's really well done and, and so seriously chosen because so many of the others are fun and sarcastic. This one is very serious. Say, say again what it is. Poetry is the subliminal history of linguistic shape. Right, so not just the words on the page and the sh the, what it looks like materially, but kind of the sublime aspect of language. And may I say, <laughs> before we turn to Leanne, yes. that I think he regret slightly regretted the serious the metaphysical seriousness of that for the next line is ahem <laughs> as if to say clearing my throat I have said something profound. Mm -hmm. Leanne pick one please. We'll have to go with um poet prose goes schlub. Splub. I'm sorry, schlub splud. Prose goes splud splud clomp clomp clomp. I think it should be poetry goes splud. Is that a typo? Poetry goes splud. P prose goes splud, splud, clomp, clomp, clomp. And what know. does he mean by all that? Okay. There's meter. Uh, yeah. For I would just I was just reading it too fast. I thought with poetry was the more condensed splud, and the prose was the. Sh but you're maybe the maybe the second one is the metered thing that goes da 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 da, -da clomp, clomp, clomp. But. It's about musicality, yeah, but it's also about condensation. Yeah, right. that's really, like, really, yeah. really good. And um, Christy, he's just making it up there, right? This doesn't, this <laughs> yeah. doesn't look like Scots at all, does it? Splud. Uh, Splud, you know, Splud is 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 not uh, a 
Thank you for <laughs> not part of any lakes of coffee. Uh, thank you for <laughs> confirming so, that. Maybe it's not a typo. Maybe it is both pros and pros. So yeah, I think it is. I think it's saying pros and yeah. And yes. then mm. he go, and he furthers it saying splud, splud, clunk, clunk, clunk. Yeah, he's like, mm. right. it's, 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 but it sounds very ungainly. You know, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it's criticizing okay. it. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, my turn. I think that. Um, <laughs> I think that mostly he's preferring poetry here, but he's also worried about how decrepit poetry has gotten when conventionally thought of. And so poetry has four wheels, two wings, and a pair of false teeth. That may mean nothing, but I think it's a reference to old Pegasus, which is of course the symbol of poetry, which does have two wings for sure. But it also has four wheels because it's a four. It's a horse. It's got four legs, and a pair of false teeth. It's old and worn, as Poetry Magazine, for instance, which ah. uses the Pegasus as its symbol. <laughs> so I'm just going to say that he's a little tired of old school poetry. Christy, you're up. You got one? Yes. Um, I mean, I've got, I've got, I've got a couple, but um, but but the the one that's been the one that's sitting sweetest with me today. <laughs> is you don't read poetry to get from Glasgow to salt coats mm. without noticing. Mm. Well, what does that mean? It's such <laughs> a local thing. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it, I mean, it, the, like Glasgow to salt coats is a local, like salt coats is in Ayrshire, and Tom, Tom's mother came from Ayrshire, he would have had family in Ayrshire. He had, like, he did teaching in Ayrshire, and and if, you, if you're getting the train from Glasgow to salt coats, every day or every week then you don't really want to look at what's happening and, and, and so you read um, but you don't read poetry you read, you read without like, noticing it's complicated yeah yeah I love that uh, you, you're you're you made this happen so you get a second one right now do you? I get a second yeah. one yeah. Oh. yeah oh you're so good to me I know I try <laughs> you're one of our favorites so one of my favourites is if you dribble past five defenders, it isn't mm -hmm. called sheer prose. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah that, 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 that's very funny, a little too clever, probably. It could be a bit clever. Right? I have, and, I have can we can, explain the reference? Yeah, so uh, the, 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 if you dribble past five defenders and you're playing football, you're playing football very well. Uh, it's poetry in motion. I yeah, guess. yeah. In fact, I, I, I owe an apology to uh, a colleague of mine, John Bolland, who quoted that line uh, at an event, and I and I said, "Prose in motion." <laughs> exactly. John actually got it right. Yeah. It was I mean, sheer it, prose. It's, it isn't just clever. It, it's I mean, a it smart way of prose. saying to people. You do say poetry in motion when someone does something extraordinarily athletic, but yeah. you, prose is not part of the greatness. You know, Michael Jordan was, po sorry, we're moving to it's, American it's, sport, but was always poetic, never prose. Mm. Sophia DeRose, you got one? Yeah, I was tempted to pick a hum, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to pick nobody publishes their first slim volume of prose. Mm -hmm. um, because I think it speaks to the title of the poem, A Hundred Differences, which it's literally not A Hundred Differences. Um, it's much slimmer than that. And I like that it's kind of calling into question like the different um, valences and textures of the genre of poetry and prose and how poetry can do a lot with a lot less. And that speaks to like something innate in poetry that doesn't exist in the explanatory narrative version of words that is prose. Love it. Thank you. Rachel Dennis, you got one? Ooh, yes, I do. I think what's calling to me right now is the last two, Are You Sitting Comfortably, Then I'll End, mm. um, which is a reference to a old British television show, the name of which is like Mother's... Uh, Jack and Ori. Yeah, it's Jack. something, and it, like my mom always quoted it to me, so like, cause it's, and it's the beginning of the bit, it's like, are you sitting comfortably, then I'll begin. Mm. Um, and I liked that little, not only does it firmly situate him as in a generation and in an area, but also it's a nice little ironic way to end the poem. And you're sitting on your end. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay, and now, and I didn't, nobody knows we're gonna do this, so Lainey, you're first. Okay. And now we go back around, to say generally why, in general, not about the line in particular, why in general Tom Leonard prefers poetry to prose, or why one should. You're first, Lainey. 
<laughs> wow, that's that's not loaded at all. Um, well, one of the things that I love is that there's this deftness in moving and in a very small space, you know, in a line break from here to here, like for instance, the line I chose and then a hem. So there's this playfulness, there's this, there's a lot can happen in a very Poetry short can space. Do that. Poetry can do that, where prose is going to take longer. Right. You're going to have to commit to hundreds of pages. And, and one way I read that ending is, are you sitting country? I'll end now because this is going to end because it's poetry while you're still comfortable. Whereas if I read your whole novel, you would be very uncomfortable sitting there in your seat. Wonderful. Leanne. Well, I think he prefers poetry because um, it's like epigrammatic. It's like these short sentences, short statements about poetry, and he's using that. It's like a, an ancient poetic mode that is done by a lot of writers since then, like Allen Ginsberg's mind writing slogans and things like that. But they're, they're sort of halfway between poetry and prose, but they're very explanatory, but they are poetic. Love it. Christy, why does he prefer? You knew Tom Leonard. Yeah, I didn't know Tom Leonard all that well, but but I did I, I did meet him I did meet him a couple of times. Yeah. Before you say why he thinks poetry better than prose, just say a sentence or two about why Glaswegian poets revere Tom Leonard. It's so many things. I, I mean, he was very like he he, he had uh, he had a real kind of social conscience. He he, he was he very had political. A, he was politically very active, um, and and we love that. In Scotland and especially in Glasgow, we're, we're all about that. Um, uh, he, um, he, yeah. I mean, he, he, he was, as you said, a, a, a troublemaker. He, 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 he would, he would cut his nose off to spite his face. And 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 he, it, but but the reason he did that is because of he he held his principles so closely. And say one more thing before you get your generalization and we turn to Sophia, and that would be, um, I forgot my thought, but, uh, oh, language. So no, not yeah, in this yeah. poem, not in this poem. No. But no, in no. other poems, he cared a lot about the local language. Yeah. And that became part, and it's, it's had an effect on you, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, Tom's, one of Tom's favorite poems of mine is, um, right enough, my language is disgraceful. Uh, and and he and he spoke very very beautifully about about um, using using the language of the people, the language of the street. Um, using he 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 was deliciously uh, angry about uh, dialogue and vernacular and and uh, and, and, uh, and people and people using the way people speak as a. As a weapon against them, that 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 was uh, something that that he was very vocally against, and and he did the opposite. He used the way people spoke to as a as a gift. Yeah. 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 All right, yeah. thank you for that. Your turn. Um, why does in general why does Tom Leonard prefer poetry to prose? Uh, well, he it, the the. The precision that that you can that you can find, and the concision, uh, and also it, it's it's also the, another thing about Tom is he was he was he was a big uh, kind of I don't I don't know if you would necessarily call him a sound poet, but he was all about he was all about the sound, uh, and and for him poetry was all about the sound and and prose. Just doesn't, doesn't do that. Doesn't it, it doesn't doesn't have the music yeah. and, and, and and poetry does, especially in yes. the hands of Tom. Lovely. Sophia? Um so I'm thinking about the line second line in the poem, you can talk about prose without mentioning school. <laughs> and I was thinking about like schools of poetry, like um, and the communities that build those schools of poetry and I'm thinking about like the reason I'm sitting here in this pub is because of the like the person sitting next to me and the relationship you have to this person and I, I feel like these pockets of poets like build communities together um, and like 
build generations, and I just feel like that's um, it. Not necessarily not true for pros, but like just not as um, intimate, not as friendly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, and fundamentally easier to share in a community like this one or the ones we come from to share your new poem because you wrote it this afternoon and you're reading tonight. Not so easy to do with the novel that you're writing. Just basic poetry community stuff. Rachel, why does he prefer, in short, poetry prose? I think it's, you when you go back to like the form, there's a elasticity to it that allows both a line like poetry is a subliminal history of linguistic shape and poetry is all the juicy bits in the juiciest order. And I think that the, that it runs the gamut of what language can do. Mm. I love it. I'll get the final word on this. I think one of the reasons he likes poetry more than prose is that he can do this. It's been said before, but the, the inherent meta-poetic quality of being able to write a poem about why poetry is better than prose, you cannot do that in prose without really messing up the fiction or the non-fiction that you're writing. So he not only prefers poetry to prose, but he can say that in a poem. Thank you all. This was really fun. Ars Poetica. Yes. <laughs>